let's try that again. So uh, today we're going to be um, answering the question as to whether or not churches should open despite the government saying that we shouldn't. That's the key question. Should churches open for gatherings to worship despite the fact that the government has said that we shouldn't? Um, why would this even matter? Yep, um, there's a couple of things to take into consideration. Obviously, the first one being as Christians, um, we acknowledge that we're called to obey God. And the Bible says, don't forsake meeting. Um, you know, we are called to meet together physically on a Sunday when, when we're able to and um, spend time looking at his word, praying and praising him. Um, so there's a clear command um, in scripture um, or commands in scripture to meet and do that. So, yeah. You... Yeah, I mean, add a, add a, I, I think that's absolutely right. So add, add a, it matters to Christians because we're told by God to do this. Of course, it matters to us for more than that because it's not just out of obedience but actually, uh, if we truly uh, are thinking rightly about, about church and about gathering together on the Lord's Day to worship, um, then we're picking up that there, it is a profoundly significant time for us. Christ is present with us as we gather, as we worship, as we break bread, as we do all these things together. Christ is with us in a particular way, in a special way, in a real way that he isn't with us um ordinarily when we're just on our own the, okay so why would we even consider not going to church if the government tells us to, to not so, go to well, church? well this is it so there's also in the, in the bible uh, teachings to say that we should respect our government and we should submit to their authority and so if the, the government have said actually don't meet at church um during lockdown um which is obviously what's happened um you know we then go well who who do we follow do we, do we follow what the government has said over what God has said? Um, or do we follow what God has said over what the government say? And so I guess that's where kind of the, the whole question comes into this. Yeah. And again, it's even more complicated because the whole Romans 13 thing, um, you know, which is where the, we're, we're talking about this, the submission to the, to the, the government is actually an act of worship for us. Um, so Paul describes it as a part of how we, offer our lives as living sacrifices because when we do that we're acknowledging god has placed them through his care and providence in the world has placed rulers on the throne to stop the world from descending into chaos even if they're bad rulers um they will be held accountable by god they won't get away with it but they're nevertheless god's agents of common grace in the world and so um when we submit to them we're not actually submitting to them we're submitting to God um, as we submit to them as an act of worship. And so, again, it's like a super big deal. Um, so we can't, it's not easy for a Christian to say, um, oh, I'm not going to submit to the to my earthly authorities. I'm just going to submit to God. Because actually they're, they're, they're connected, you know. Um, my, the way I submit to God is to, to submit to my earthly authorities, whether they are church authorities whether they are household authorities or whether they are state authorities um, or whether they're your employer, you know, um, it, the, we submit to them um, and we work for them as if we were working for God. This is part of our, our spiritual life. So what do you think then in a situation like this, when churches uh, are commanded in the Bible to obey God and to gather on the Lord's day to, to worship together, um, but also are commanded to obey the government who's telling us not to meet for a time. What's the right thing to do? So I think there's a couple of things to think about here. Um, and we need to be clear that the government didn't say check can't meet on Sundays, full stop. They said churches can't meet on Sundays. You can't go to the pub. You can't go to certain shops. You can't do this. You can't do that. So it's not um, just kind of against Christians. Um, so like in the book of Daniel, um, he, the king makes a rule that no one can pray. And so Daniel prays and continues to pray, um, which I think is the right thing to do. And the Bible seems to agree with that. Um, and so there's a big difference there. 
um, in Daniel that the, the king or the government at the time have clearly stated, don't pray to God. Everything else is fine, but don't pray to God. Whereas obviously our government have said loads of things at the moment for a temporary period need to pause so that hopefully we can um, do the best with COVID um, is the reason behind it. Um, and so there's a difference in motive, um, which I think needs to be bared in mind. And there's a difference in kind of, I guess that, that it's not a permanent thing, it's a temporary thing. And so that should also be something that kind of feeds into how we respond to this. Um, one other thing to bring up is the government haven't said Christians cannot meet online. Christians cannot um, like read the Bible together online. Christians cannot. So they've not stopped Christianity. Um, they've stopped um, or, you know, they, they've kind of paused, I think is a, a fairer word, um, the gathering on Sundays at church, yeah. um, but also other activities as well. They haven't just singled out one faith um, or faith they basically said lots of things can't happen yeah 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 i think you know the, the the i think that's a good point the pushback uh would be from that well that's not real church it's not real gathering which i would agree with right yeah you know, so I, I would agree that um it is not enough you can't have virtual church you can't have virtual christian life and we are uh, churches are suffering as a result of not being able to see each other face to face. You, you see this in all kinds of ways. Um, and I guess that's the, that's the kind of pushback on that, that, yeah, even though we're allowed to do that, we're actually in effect still not being allowed to gather as the church. And I think there is some merit in that argument. I do understand that. Um, but, but like you said, what it does point out is it's not a persecution thing, you know? Yeah. It, it, it's, it's not about wanting to stop Christianity or take away Christian rights to, to worship or anything like that or to believe what they believe. That, that battle still may yet come, particularly over issues of ethics and things like that. But um, I think what it is at the moment is, like you say, just we have a disease. Diseases spread through in-person contact. And so we have, to, we have to stop that. Now, having said that, I did actually sign a petition because what it was simply pointing out to the government was that this is a difficult position for Christians to be in. And so making them aware of that and that every time they ask us to shut churches, they're, they're asking more of us than they know. You know, we're not sort of of that, especially as Baptists, we're not of that sort of tribe where we are content to do personal prayers by lighting candles and things in the church like we don't do that you know church for us is a corporate thing so um you know we, we don't have these come into church for individual prayer things like i can do that at home i don't need to go to a, a, a some sort of sacred building for that you know i, I can I can do that quite comfortably from here um but uh and it, the other thing i pointed out to them is that there isn't actually a huge amount of evidence to say that COVID is being spread through church gatherings mm. um, and by a huge amount I mean there's no evidence none that's all um, other than the general theory that it could be possible and so all the so some of the restrictions they placed on us just basically have no scientific backing and that's my issue so that's why I signed signed, signed the petition now um, coming back to that previous point um, is that I think when Jesus was was arguing about the Sabbath with the disciples he makes that point back to them and they're like why are you healing on the sabbath and he says well if your ox or your donkey falls into a hole on the sabbath wouldn't you pull them out so he's saying it's lawful to do good but he also questioned the example of david so he does this in mark and in matthew um, when in that section where he's teaching on the lord of the sabbath and uh he talks about how did you not notice that david um you know, when he was starving, went into the, into, uh, you know, the house of God and he ate the, the, the bread that was consecrated for the priests. It was unlawful for him to eat that bread. But him and his army were basically starving. He was the, the anointed king of God. And it was like die or eat the bread sort of scenario. And Jesus is saying, 
it was perfectly appropriate for him to break the law to eat the bread because there's a kind of common sense hierarchy of the laws here. You know, it is obviously okay to heal on the Sabbath because that is a good and loving thing to do. And so obviously you can be a good and loving person on the Sabbath. Like it's just, you know, it shouldn't be that complicated. One law does trump the other. Um, you know, in, in, in those moments when it seems like there's a conflict, Jesus is saying, well, there are greater and lesser laws. And he, he says elsewhere to the, to the Pharisees, I think it's in Mark chapter 7, um, you know, you guys uh, ignore the weightier commands and you emphasize all the kind of rituals and the, the dietary laws and the cleansing laws, but you ignore the weightier commands of loving each other and, and that sort of thing. And, um, and so he's, he's essentially saying that, you, you know, you should, you should do them both at the same time, but there are commands that are weightier and it would be better for you to focus your attention on, on those sorts of things. So when it comes to kind of gathering, there is a sense in which we can say in this particular situation where it is only for a limited period of time for a very specific purpose, you can say um, that the law of love your neighbor as yourself trumps the law of gathering together. Um, you should do both, but when there is a conflict, it is perfectly appropriate. And I think that because, again, because it's a limited period of time for a specific purpose, I think it is appropriate to submit to the government. It's not a contradiction here. What do you think about that? I personally agree. Um, you know, I'm aware that there will be some churches um, around the world that would have met, regardless of what their government have said. Um, I can understand that as well. Um, probably not the way I would have done it. Because um, like I say, you know, it wasn't a persecution against Christians. It was a, a temporary measure. Um, so yeah. And obviously, like you say, well, we can, we can come back this Sunday, um, which we will be doing. Um, yeah, and then hopefully, you know, it will continue to be that we can meet, even if we have to do social distancing and stuff. Um, fine. You know, let's go for it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think um, it's exactly right. And I think we have to bear that in mind that every local church um, governed by its, you know, by its conscience and um, by its elders um, are, are perfectly within their rights to to discern this another way, I think we need to chill out a little bit on the those churches that are doing this are kind of stupid and giving all Christians a bad name. Um, and I wouldn't do that. And I think they're just they're going to get fined and they're going to have to pay those fines and they're going to have to live with those consequences. And so, you know, if they want to go down that road, that's that's absolutely their call and up to their conscience. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, I think that we need to respect that and not. And not criticize them too harshly for that, though we may want to, uh, you know, converse with them and challenge their view. We should do that lovingly and graciously, respecting their conscience. And and the opposite is true. You know, if you are a church that's decided to open um, and defy the government, don't call us compromisers. That's not what we are. We're all trying to work out what to do here. It's it's an unprecedented situation, and so. Um, we're all trying to be faithful and some of us may be more scared of defying the government than others um, and some of us may be more too willing to defy the government for for their own sake uh, and we just we're just trying to get through it all together so that's that's our take on it those are some thoughts for you hope you find it helpful any closing words tim no that's it the beard says it all yeah.